I could have told you at Hudson Yards, I could have had a list of 250 retailers to choose from, apparel, young generation retailers, accessories, luxury. I mean, that list in the last five to 10 years has gone from 250 to 50. So you've got to find other ways to really go at creating the excitement and destination traffic in these projects. As an example, I have a long, great relationship with Jose Andres, a great chef out of Washington from Spain. So what are we doing? We got a 40,000 square foot market of a joint venture with Jose Andres. I've handmade the deal, picked the operator, worked with them on the design, and that's not how this is typically done. At a project like Hudson Yards, we're literally building a whole new city. Look at the room you're in. Most retail developers would literally have filled most of this room. No one would have ever devoted this kind of allocation of square footage to a public space that's not income producing. But when you do fill it with great uses and you activate the edges, you draw people to the restaurants, you get tremendous interest and tremendous traffic in the project, which generates in sales, which is the most important thing. If you think about how the shopping center model for development has evolved over the last 30 or 40 years. Everyone started with department stores and they were boxes. Most of them were placed in a horizontal layout. You weren't going up. No one wanted to go past the first level, maybe a two level mall. I've never believed in that. So if you look at this project you're standing in, Time Warner Center, we knew as we developed the project, we wanted to have a great food retail use. So Whole Foods went into the lower level. We knew we were going to put destination restaurants up in the project on levels three and four to drive people up in the project. We already had jazz at Lincoln Center, so we had the entertainment component at the top of the project. When you get those kinds of traffic generators and interest generators early in the process, filling in the retail becomes a lot easier, but much more difficult today. We are in a constant state of change. I have no idea where it's going to end up. But I know one thing, if you came into my office today versus five years ago, when we go to leasing strategy meetings and we go to meetings on programming these projects, I can tell you we're listening very intensely to the younger people who are in touch with what's going on with online retailing and young brands.